Welcome back to Bullet Wealth. In today's episode, we have college golfer Anna Kittleson sharing her tips and tricks on how to improve your golf game. Leave us a comment, like, and subscribe. How's everything been going? It's good. It is finally like slowly like COVID is kind of like out of the picture for like the most part. And so you're able to get back to training as normal? Yeah, we've been training as normal for like the last year, I would say now. But like we used to have to wear masks in the travel vans and like that just got discontinued last week. And two weeks ago, we stopped wearing masks in gyms. And now so the only place we have to wear them is the classroom, which is like, I feel like so much progress. (laughs) Yeah. Luckily, your sport's outdoors, though. So that wasn't too impacted, like driving range and outdoor playing. No, compared to like the other teams, we definitely had like more access and like where other teams I feel like had to stop practicing or like couldn't practice like in full groups. Like we were completely fine to like just go as normal. And, And where are you playing now? So I play at University of Delaware. How's that been going? You like the, cause you transferred, didn't you? Yeah, I started at a small school in Texas called Midwestern State. And then in the middle of my sophomore year, right before the pandemic, I transferred to University of Delaware. And it was like the best decision I've ever made. I absolutely love it here. Is the facilities better or what makes it makes it so great? Yeah, we have access to a lot more golf courses. And then I absolutely love the coaching staff. There's nothing wrong with Midwestern State. It just is like the difference between D2 and D1 is like huge. And so we get like more equipment, like more training staff, more resources. And it definitely has a lot of perks. So does it get boring if you have to play the same course like every day or because I only get out like once a week, maybe twice a week. So it doesn't get too repetitive playing the same course. But I feel like if you're playing every day and play the same course, does it feel repetitive at all or? Well, that's the nice thing here is that we actually play and practice at four different courses. Yeah. So that'd that'd be really nice. The odds of us like playing the same course back to back never happen. So like today we played a course called Deerfield and then tomorrow we're going to go to DuPont and then Saturday we'll probably go to Wilmington. So like we're like all over the place all the time. And then two of the courses that we actually practice at both have two courses. That's awesome. So we're just like all over the place. And and so what does your like daily training look like now? Uh, So we work out at 645 in the morning and then go to class or I guess sometimes don't have class and then just practice like between three and four hours. And then that's about it. I think like your day as a golfer can be as like busy or not as busy as you want it to be. If that makes sense. So like you can like do extra practice or like you can go see the sports psychologist or the trainer, but like consistently it's just like workout and then practice. And And those three hours of practice, is it mainly putting? Is it chipping? Is it short game range? Yeah, I would say like 85% of the time we're on the putting green and chipping green. Wow. It's not always my favorite thing, but the coaches say that it's the most important. So. (laughs) <laughs> I could definitely see that. So what do you, what, what do you do to keep putting fun and practicing putting? Cause I'll go do it for like five minutes and I get bored. I'm super ADD. Is there yeah, we, any like tricks there? Yeah. We play with like a lot of games. Like there's never like, I don't think we're ever on the putting green and just putting like we're either playing a competition. And I like, I feel like recently we've been making up a lot of our own games and then our coaches have a lot of challenges for us. So like we'll putt and it's like, okay, like you have to do this drill. Like we did one the other day where we had, there were five holes and each hole had a five footer, a 10 footer, a 15 footer and a 20 footer. And you had to go around until you made a hundred feet worth of putts. So it's like, if you make the five foot, that's five feet. You make it 20 foot, it's 20 feet. And you had to keep going until you made a hundred. And then once you have a hundred, like the game's done and then you can like move on. But unless you get a hundred, you have to like keep going. And so I think a lot of times like that, it's like really easy to like keep you on the putting green because you're motivated and then you want to beat other people. And did you have to get the all hundred feet in a row and just like quickest to do it? So you have to get it within the five putts. Within five. Like, or, or just within the five holes, not the five putts. So like... Within five holes, if you don't get 100 feet, you have to start over at the first hole again. Got it. 
okay. Okay. So you could miss, you could miss the second 10 foot putt, but then you just got to make, get to the hundred on the next three holes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So just like, I don't know. It's fun. It's like a lot harder than it seems, but it's fun. And then another really fun game is this game called cat and mouse where you set up between like six to 10 tees at one hole, like at a certain footage. So like we usually do six feet and then you start with two people on opposite ends. And if you make one, you get to move closer to the person and then like you try and catch them. Got it. So like tag and then make them. Yeah. That's fun. Okay. Yeah. And then what about chipping? Is that just kind of who holds out first or who gets closest with a certain number of shots or what are you doing there? Yeah, I think it just depends. Like there's a game called 21 where if you play, you get like three, if you make it two, and then like, depending on how many people you are playing with, like you either get two points for being the closest or one point for being the closest. And then we do a lot of other chipping games where it's like they put you at a certain distance and you have to hit it with inside a circle from different yardages. Yeah. So, and then just a lot of like simple, like closest to the hole, like, oh, we'll play nine holes chipping. Like whoever's closest gets a point. Yeah. Gosh, I'm, I'm so excited for it to be the season here again in Colorado. It's just Mm -hmm. been freezing. So yeah, the weather here is terrible too. Like today it was like 45 and rainy. I'm like, really? (laughs) And is this mid season for you guys or where do you, where are we right now in your season? I think we're actually right uh, halfway we play we play six tournaments this spring and our fourth one is monday awesome it's coming up How, how's it been going is everything going smoothly it's a lot of up and down i think that's like always how golf goes it's like one good day one bad day like we just need to make sure like start making all of our good days on the same days you know it's like one person will play good one person plays bad because as much as like Golf is individual and college, it's so team focused. Mm -hmm. So like you need the whole team to play good, to do good. Yeah. And on the same day. Yeah. That's tough. Because like if you have, because so in college you have five people and you take four scores, like count for the total. And so if you have three people that play good and two people that play bad, it just kind of like, like ruins it a little bit, you know? So it's like your team's got to be cohesive. I think I saw there was some tournament recently. I don't know how recent, but where you had three Eagles in one round. Yeah. So that was actually my sophomore first semester of my sophomore year at Midwestern state. It was the craziest round ever. I had three Eagles, two doubles <laughs> That's a ins- four pot in the round. It was like the most wild, oh like luckiest, unluckiest round of my entire life. And I, I will not forget it. It was also wow. my first under par collegiate round. Dang. And then, so that probably, it didn't end up being a pretty, not too low of a round for you. Yeah. I ended up shooting 69. That's not bad. Is it? Or what's your, like, what's your lowest round? My lowest round is a 67. In tournament? Yeah. Is that your lowest round too out of tournament or? Yeah. That's cool. What, what round was that? Or where was that? That was during COVID. I had played in a GCAA event. Um, just like not through the school or anything, just individually. And I had also pl- played quite bad the first day. <laughs> and so then the next day I was like, oh, whatever. And then I shot 67. That's sweet. I ended up being in fourth for that tournament. So you recovered a little bit from that first day? And still got yeah, there. It's, it's just so funny how golf works that way. Like, like you do bad, then you do great. And mm-hmm. I think that's what keeps us coming back, you know? Oh, yeah. I, I swear I'm going to get good this year, but we'll see. <laughs> It's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. I'll- I believe in you. <laughs> yeah. What? Do- so if I wanted to get from like a 10 handicap down to like an eight or a six, you think it's really just focusing on short game and putting? Yeah. I mean, we like see it all the time. We did like a really cool thing at practice on Tuesday where our coach set up like two sets of 18 holes on the putting green and they're all putts. And I can't remember who it was that we were like mimicking his golf round. But in one of the rounds, he hit 10, 11 greens. And the other round, he had hit 15 greens. But in the one where he only hit 11 greens, he shot a 62. Dang. And the one where he hit 14 greens, he shot a 69. So it's like it really just comes down to like making putts. And so I think if like – like if you can eliminate your three putts, that's going to like drop your handicap like way faster than anything else would. 
What type of putter are you using? I use a TaylorMade uh, Spider Mini. Yeah, I feel like, the, yeah, the Spider, it, that's the most popular putter on tour too, isn't it? I think last time I checked. I'm not sure. I think it was up there. I'm sure the, I used to use the Spider and then I went to the Mini. But I love it. I've been using it for about two years now. So. No going back, sticking to the Mini? I, for now, yeah. I'm like, I am so skeptical about like switching. Like I'm like worried that like the one time that I switch is going to be the one time that like the putter is going to be really good. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I you're like, stuck with it. it. Yeah. Like, so we have some people who like switch putters like every week. They're like, Oh, it's the putter. It's the putter. And I'm like, I can't, I have to just like, like stick with them. Like it's not the putter. It's always me. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so what are you really focusing on for the rest of this season? So we have a conference in, I think just over three weeks. So I think like the goal is just to prepare for that because for um, like schools that are ranked out of the top 50, like conference is the only thing that matters. Like that's how you're going to get to regionals. That's how you're going to like get your shot at nationals. So for the next couple of weeks, we're just focusing on like getting more comfortable, like in the tournament setting and just like kind of preparing for like the layout of that course and playing well, we're going to win. I believe awesome. it. Awesome. Let's do it. How, how many rounds do you play in the, in the conference? It's three days, uh, 18 holes each day. Okay. So it's and the it same. Just, Every tournament like we play throughout the day, throughout the year is always 54 holes. Got it. It's just most tournaments are 36, 18 and conference is 18, 18, 18. Got it. Is LPGA also eight, three days of 18 or is it four? They do four. They do. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Is that kind of in the, in the goals? Yeah. I mean, I hope so. I have, um, so I'm a senior this year and then I have one more year of eligibility because of COVID. So I'm hoping by the end of next year, like things will kind of start coming together and I can try and look at like going to Q school. And then, so what does that process look like? What is, where, what is Q school? So Q school is like basically like your ticket into like the LPGA, PGA. Like it's, I wouldn't say it's the easiest, but it's like one of like the most common ways to use, I would say. I don't like the process is very complicated and there's like different stages. And I, I like don't personally know anybody who's like gone through it to like be able to ask them, but I'm just kind of going to get there when I get there. <laughs> yeah. Just one step at a time. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's like, like to be on the tour, you have to be so good. And it's like, I mean, the difference is like minimal, but like that minimal distance is like huge. And so I don't, um, like that's the go end goal always like is I'm always going to strive for that, but you just got to focus it one step at a time because I think if you get too big, then you're just like, then you just fall back. You know? Yeah, it is. Yeah. The difference to look at that is actually crazy. If you look at like number one in the world versus like number 40 in the world, number 200 in the world, it's like, yeah. isn't it like one stroke around difference yeah. on average? Yeah. It's like, it's like the difference between making of. 10 footer not making a 10 footer like hitting the ball OB and hitting the ball in the fairway like it's like so minimal but it, and like a lot of it is luck too like we always talk about like some days you're you just have to be lucky like you like winning is 50 percent luck it's like you play good on one day or you don't play good and is that luck just like a bounce or just you're just making the putts or you're not making the putts or yeah i think it just it, it really just all comes down to putting like it's putting and driving, you know, like my swing coach always says, he's like, you drive for dough and then you putt for more dough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh yeah. You've been to South Broadway country club. I think they have that. They have that or something like that written on the, the top of the building. Yeah. No, I think I do remember that. That golf bar here in Denver. Yeah. 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 That's the place with all the track mans, right? Yeah. 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 So I love it. I'm trying to talk them into letting me take a track man outside so that I can hit on real grass. Cause I hit everything so fat and I think it's cause I play in there so much hitting on mats. Yeah, well, when you play on mats, like if you hit it fat, you don't really hit it fat. I know. So I don't, so I think I just get in the habit of doing yeah. that. Yeah. We, one of our golf courses here, like has all the par threes off of mats and we love it because we can hit the shot however we want. And typically it's going to end up way better than if we were, would have been on the grass. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you can't chunk it. It's still going to go. <laughs> it's so what's your, what's your like go-to swing thought right now, whenever you're like first tee drive. First tee drive. 
Um, I think when I'm in a tournament, the first tee drive is just like to breathe. Yeah. Like, because like the nerves are pumping and it's just, it's always like, okay, like the goal, um, like our kind of like goal for the semester is like the three P's is patient, present and positive. And so, yeah, because in golf, like it's so easy to like get like four holes ahead or like get like one shot ahead, like on the first tee, like you always think, okay, I have to birdie it, but like, no, we have to hit the drive first so we can birdie it. So I always just think like, okay, why do breathe? Like, it's cool. It's fine. Like one shot at a time, like just hit it. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's awesome that you guys have a psychiatrist or psychologist there too, a sports psychologist. Yeah. So we have actually two, we have Dr. Jehu and Dr. Devine. And Dr. Jehu works with our team. And then Dr. Devine, I work with um, personally. Man, that's sweet. Yeah. That's I, why I said, like, at the beginning, like, as, like, a college athlete, you can be as busy or not as busy as you want to because, like, we get offered so many resources. It just depends on if you, like, choose to take them or not. Yeah. And so do you do any sort of, like, meditation or anything? I know Tiger always talks about, like, focusing on his breath. I guess you just said presence. Yeah. And then we do the four square breathing. What we is that? We talk about a lot. It's, like, where you breathe in for four, you hold four, you breathe out for four, and then you hold four. Yeah. Is it in through the nose? I think so. Or do they not say? They don't specify. I don't know. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) And so what else, what else is going on? I'm graduating. Nice. I'm really excited. And then you said you're going to stay and do grad school too? Yep. So I just actually got into the school um, for my master's in public administration with a specialization in nonprofit management. That's cool. Yeah, so I'm really excited for that. That'll be interesting, different. I actually just went to my open house yesterday and it was it was it's different. Like grads I guess I never really thought I always thought grad school was like kind of the same as college. Like you just like mm-hmm. kind of switch. But like I was the youngest person by like fifteen years and I was like, All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is the open house? Or what is that? It was just like they, um, like all, all, like a couple professors, like a couple current students, and then all like the incoming students. Unfortunately, it was over Zoom, but um, so we just like all met and then everybody like introduced themselves. And then we met personally with our program directors just to like kind of get to know everybody and like see who's like coming into the program, just kind of get like, I guess, a little jump and to like feel comfortable. Because a Got lot it. of people that are going into the master's program aren't from Delaware. Got it. So like they're all coming like from the workforce and from like all of the country. It was crazy that I didn't also didn't like you forget like how many like like I think Delaware's so small and I'm like, oh like nobody even knows where it is. But then in the open house yesterday we had like people from Africa and people from like Germany. And I was like, I forget that like like people want to come here. Yeah. <laughs> that like aren't from here. And and how long of a program is that? It's two years. Okay. And are you able to golf still? Yeah. So luckily, like master's programs are kind of nice because you only have to take nine credits to be a full-time student. So it's only three classes. So it's honestly okay. quite easy. I, I, I'm sure the workload is harder, but like in undergrad, it's uh, 12 credits. So it's and, are, and are you still golfing for the school for those two years? Uh, for one year. I only have one year of eligibility. One year left. Okay. Yeah. So my goal is... Um, to take some winter courses and then also take some summer courses and hopefully like turn the year into, or turn the two years into a year and a half. Of playing. Uh, no, because then you only get a certain amount of years of eligibility. So okay. Got it. Okay. School. So you're saying cut down the two years to one year, one yeah. and a half years of school and then one year yeah. of eligibility. Yeah. So I have one year left of playing, which is like so sad. <laughs> <laughs> I always think like, like, I don't know what I would do. Like, cause I, got lucky you know I feel terrible saying this but like COVID was kind of like really lucky for me in a sense and I feel terrible because I know it was like so bad for like other people you know but like so when I transferred I actually was ineligible to play the semester that I transferred because of like NCAA rules like you can't transfer mid-season and so I couldn't play and then COVID happened so nobody could play. And then when they gave out f- like the fifth year, like the COVID year, 
I got the COVID year because technically I was academically eligible. I just wasn't like, I'm not even sure the terms for I like really have no idea how I ended up getting the fifth year, but somehow I got it. So like I transferred and instead of like losing a semester, I actually like ended up gaining a whole year. Yeah, that's kind of nice. So it was like super nice for me. I mean, I mean, the whole pandemic was crazy and terrible and awful and but it worked out okay for me. So now I like get to do grad school and like get half of my grad school paid for and play next year of golf. Cause like, I couldn't imagine like just graduating right now and like being done. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a bummer. I'd be, it's like crazy. Like, like, I don't know. Part of me is like, okay, I have to make it on tour because I don't know what I'm going to do if I can't play golf. Yeah. You got to do it. Yeah. Let's, let's make it happen. So maybe this is us speaking it into existence. <laughs> exactly. We're, pu- we're putting it out there into the yeah, okay. universe. And then we can watch back a couple of years from now after I win and be like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything else that you thought we should cover today? I can't, the 20 minutes always goes by so quick. Anything else that you thought we should cover? You know, the one thing I do want to say is thank you because so it had to be two years now when I came and I like hung out at your office for a week and kind of did like a little shadow experience, you know? Yeah. Um, Because I, we had um, this like program thing that we do and like uh, for like each grade level for the athletes. And so we talked about financial stuff and we went there and we talked about like 401ks and Roth IRAs and I knew everything because <laughs> of my experience with you. So I did just want to thank you. Awesome. Well, I'm glad it was useful information. And it stuck too, two years later. Man. Yeah. Time flies. I think that actually might've been three years ago. Actually, yeah. I have no idea. I have no idea. You're probably right. <laughs> well, no, maybe it was Maybe it was three. I don't know. But either way, thank you. <laughs> because <laughs> I was like way ahead of people. Like that's the crazy thing is like we really aren't taught like anything about that ever. Yeah. And so then I when we went into that meeting, people are like, what? And I was like, I know. And that's our goal with this too. We're trying to do a podcast just to get interesting people on so then people listen. And then we're going to also roll out little like three minute clips and things like that about like financial subjects and personal financial planning. Yeah. And it's try to super help helpful, educate especially people. for like people my age, because we really are clueless. Like you don't take classes on it. Like if we didn't have this like program that we have to go to, like people would have no idea. Yeah. And I see that even with like finance grads or even me as a finance grad, uh, you still don't really learn personal finance and like IRA yeah. versus 401k versus how much you should save and those types of yeah. things. So ho- hopefully it's helpful. Yeah. Great. Well, yeah, thank you so much again for coming on today. Thanks for having me. This is so fun. Keep us updated with everything. That's exciting. I will. We're pumped for you. Thank you. I'll let you know when we win.